only 4,680 pounds with a super slide. A crazy lightweight little Rockwood bunkhouse coming in down here at Advantage One RV. Now, it's not a perfect time capsule, but I don't think there's anything here uh, that you need to really apologize for too awful much. It's got a couple spots that I'm going to point out as we go through, but everything I can see indicates this RV is like perfectly campable. And you know who I think this would be just an amazing fit for? Is like a first timer with a half ton or something like that. At this stage, when it's your first RV, you don't know what you don't know. So finding something like this that is going to be, uh, even though it's got a couple years on it, maybe it's not an ideal shape, but it's, it's a budget beater. You can get out there, you can get your feet wet, you can figure out what you don't know, and that will make you so much better equipped to, to get the second one and to find that like long-term camper that you know maybe you've got an idea for right now, but maybe you find out eventually, oh man, that doesn't exactly do what I thought it would do. I like the light uh, colors in here overall. This is a, a classic sofa galley slide where the sofa and the kitchen are actually all in one shallow super slide, which is help keeping the weight down on here. Now, if we crack all that open and you take a look, you can see there's actually some pretty decent storage through it. Also, far more than you would have realized. And the kitchen actually continues kind of down through the hallway where there's uh, folks kind of built themselves a big old dresser drawer space. Another thing I want to point out here is that the kitchen counter is way deeper than you realize. We tend to only look at things like how wide are they? Look at how deep this is also. So like your appliances and stuff, you can put behind your main fixtures right here, your coffee maker type stuff. So it's there. It's You don't have to like pull it out every day, but it's not eating up your like dedicated everyday primary space. There's drawers below the dinette over here. Rockwood just Rockwood's always been a brand that kind of does a little bit more. I love that free floating table too, so that if you want to, you can take that thing outside. Nice campsite viewing window, something a lot of people look for in today's market that is hard to find. Um, and a big pantry over here, because the kitchen's kind of like sort of split. You sort of walk through the kitchen. It's like a forward bedroom, middle living, and then middle kitchen, and then rear bunk and bath arrangement. Now there's been, like I said, a couple little glitches. There was a cold crack here on the floor. And the folks basically have just a nice clear seam tape holding that back down. It's not visually perfect, but again, if what you're looking for is to beat some budgets, that'll be a good uh, option for you here. I do believe there was a little trickle of water that snuck through here. And I think somebody went through and put some kills on it to try to, you know, get that stain off of there and make sure it wasn't going to become a mold factory. There is a spot up in the bedroom that had suffered a leak. I won't hide stuff like that from you. I think it's minor, so I'm not uh, making a big jumping jack deal out of it. We'll take a look at it when we get up there. I have not looked at these rear corners, pardon me. No, I don't, I don't see anything yet. I, I tell you, if you're looking at used RVs, the top four corners are absolutely the first place you should ever be looking. Those are the uh, the most common culprits. If there ever has been any sort of water intrusion, which is fancy talk for leaks, that's where it's probably going to happen. Now, I've got the two single bunks and a really compact bathroom. It's an arrangement you don't see very much in today's market. It used to be very popular because it allowed uh, the RV designers to really... Uh, minimize the amount of floor plan space that bunks in a bathroom occupied. Today's bigger double bunks and bathroom arrangements, they require the camper to be bigger, heavier, and more expensive, which this one, again, barely, not even 4,700 pounds. I think it was like 4,675 or something like that. This thing is crazy lightweight considering having a, the big slide like it does. And again, with that arrangement, the, with the way this is kind of positioned, even though it's a shallow slide, it still looks and feels nice and big in here. The opposing windows, I think, are one of those things that really helps it along, too. Also a good window to be able to keep an eye on your campsite in case the kids start screaming bloody murder. Now, the front of this, again, to keep the whole RV shorter and lighter weight, this has a classic almost Fleetwood-style east-west corner bed. This is not an, uh, a walk-around front bed like you tend to find in a lot of slide-out campers today. You don't see a lot of designs like this in the marketplace anymore. It used to be, again, a very common thing. It's a corner camp queen. You see the side stand over there, a couple sets of outlets. You can actually still see just even, even way back when, Rockwood has always had a full aluminum frame under any of the furniture they make. That's just one of those things they do. And like front windows, when this was made, everybody had a front window. Most brands phased them out. Rockwood's like one of the only ones that just never stopped doing it. They just always kind of did it better. 
And again, like I said, there has been a leak in the bedroom area here. And I hope you appreciate the fact that I like, I stopped the show. I make sure you folks get to see this stuff before we move on. We are a family owned and operated uh, outfit right here. And it is our integrity that we hold uh, pretty dear. That's what I think really has helped us succeed against so many of the really big like uh, chain sort of uh, stores out there. But it would have been really easy to gloss over this because actually the defect that I'm talking about right now is in the frame. And you might be able to see it a little bit right here but it doesn't really stick out. It's the kind of thing that if you came to see the RV in person, you definitely spot it, but I'm not gonna just not talk about it and then be like, oh, I hope they go ahead and buy it anyway. You're gonna know about stuff before you show up at Halet RV, not after. And here's what I'm talking about. It is minor, but it is there. I have to get right up on this before you can even really make it out in any kind of definition. There has been some seam failure. It looks like where the sidewall met the, uh, the roof. There's a little spot right there. Now, if I crack this open, give you a little endoscopy view. I don't know how well this is even gonna show up. There's there's nothing up here. So that's what's interesting. Usually it comes from the front corner, but it actually looks like it started along the side here. But that's all there is. There's, there's the little spot of the flooring in the kitchen. There's this spot right here. It's not really stopping you from camping. And in, in a way, it's actually just saving you a lot of money. And man, for the age, it doesn't really, like, look its age. I, I, I don't know how to phrase that any differently. Obviously, that sentence itself doesn't make a lot of sense, but I think you know what I mean. Like, you can still see all the original blue and tan and everything in the decals. Everything isn't, like, faded and oxidized. This has to have spent most of its life either under a cover or indoors, or, it's, or like in a carport. It's had some sort of protection given to it the majority of its life. This is also a... Uh, fully aluminum skeleton product and it is six-sided laminated. So the roof, the floor, the front, the rear, and all the sidewalls, even the full boxing of the slide out, everything on this is aluminum framed and laminated. It does hug a little bit lower to the ground, so it's a little bit better on ground clearance than a lot of the newer campers. A lot of that is just due to the fact that, again, it is lighter weight. Uh, the tires look good. You know, like, let me get you right up here on top of the decal so you can see what I mean. Like, they don't, an RV of this age, I just assume by default is going to have all sorts of peeling and flaking on the decals. I don't see that here. And I mean, again, even given the age, the awning doesn't look bad. It's not a brand new awning or anything like that, but uh, again, there's nothing on this RV that makes me think, ooh, you better do that for it before you go camping. It's ready to go. So once again, I hope you appreciate the fact that we take the time to really show these things fairly. Because again, I think this is going to be a very good fit for a first timer. And I think a lot of the first time people out there wouldn't know what to look for, where to look, or how to interpret some of the things we've shown here for you today. So understand, whether this is just gonna be your first one or your next one, we are just putting it all right out there. We're putting ourselves right out there so that you know what you're getting when you show up here. Some other places do it, some other places don't. We do, I hope you appreciate that. And if you do, give us a call when you're ready. If not on this one, then check out something else we have or let us know, hey, I'm looking for this, that, or the other thing. I appreciate that you guys don't give me the runaround. What do you have for me and my family? Let our team go to work for you. We'll find you something. We'll get you camping. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone. A1, have an A1 day. We're at Advantage 1 today. Oops. <laughs>